Hi everyone, let's talk about pulse width modulation, or PWM in short. PWM is a signal that oscillates between on-off or high and low. In our case, a microcontroller pin is toggled between 0 and 1 at a set interval. A few measures are important here. The first one is how long a signal is on versus off. This is generally called the duty cycle, and in this example, if the signal is high 70% of the time and low the rest, that is a 70% duty cycle. The second measure is how fast the toggling is done. This is measured as the number of on-off switches per second. In my example here, the frequency is 5 Hz. Let's see some uses of this. The first one is servo motors. We need to tell a motor how to move. For servos, the duty cycle tells it in what position it should move. This is how one can control robot arms, for example. Another usage example is LEDs. You can control the amount of time a LED stays on versus off to achieve a LED dimming effect. If the switching is fast enough, the human eye does not perceive it as blinking, but rather a dimness. A low duty cycle will result in a dim light, and a high duty cycle will result in more brightness. Notice that in my example I did not directly connect a PWM to the LED. This is because a microcontroller can only drive a small amount of current. It can very likely uh, drive a single LED, however for light strips for example you would connect it to a MOSFET or transistor which acts as an on-off switch. If you do this, since the control signal is from a microcontroller, meaning small voltage, you have to make sure that your MOSFET is a logic level one, which means it can be toggled by low voltages. Checking data sheets helps a lot. Let's do a practical example next. I will start off with a basic blinky program and my goal is to add PWM support to this. So uh, let's see how we can use the Rust documentation uh, to figure out what arguments and how do I actually even set up PWM. And then uh, I'll write the program and we'll test it out. So the first thing to do is uh, when you have a project, uh, there is this option to run cargo doc. So I will run cargo doc open and what I expect is uh, that everything will be compiled and eventually it will show me a documentation that uh, will apply to all the crates that I'm using in my project. In my case I have the STM hardware abstraction layer and that one has an implementation of uh, PWM. So this is uh, the documentation and one of the things that I can do I could browse through it and I can go through HAL and I have uh, various things like uh, analog digital converters, delays and so on. One of them is PWM and another option would be for me to search PWM and see what comes up. And uh, I, I will pick the first one. I know I need the uh, STM32. Let's see how we read these things. So uh, structure is not so interesting, but functions. So what I expect is that these functions uh, will create, uh, will help me create a PWM uh, signal. And I, I know I have a timer one from the data sheet, so I will click it. And I will try to read through what this means. So the first uh, argument, I have to put a timer one. I will have to figure out what that is. Pins, I will leave it for last because it's the most complex one. Uh, the uh, clock configuration, I already have access to from the blinky sketch. And the frequency should be simple enough because it's just some hertz. Um, so let's go through them one by one. Uh, what is uh, timer one? If I go through timer one, it gives me a bunch of uh, information but it doesn't tell me what it is so the simplest way to find it uh, could be time one and I do a search and uh, what I find is it, in, it that it's in the peripheral access crate so uh, this means that at some point I, I will want to find uh, tim one in uh, PAC so if I go back to my code in uh, the STM32 uh, uh, peripheral uh, access crate so there's PAC peripherals I expect to have a tim one The second bit that I need, I, I need these pins. And the documentation uh, tells me this should be of type pins that apply to uh, timer one and some argument P. So I will click on this link and try to read the things. And uh, what I can see is that pins is implemented as long as you provide a series of four arguments or three arguments or two arguments or even one argument. Uh, and uh, it doesn't yet tell me what these uh, arguments P1 are. So uh, I just want one single PWM signal. So I'll search for the ones that are one argument. And I, I am wondering what can this pin C1 be that, that can take place of uh, P1. And if I click on it, I see that for timer one, I have PAO8, 
uh, alternate alternate function to. Uh, what in the world does this mean? Uh, so what this means is that uh, for one of the pins on my MCU, I can set it in a specific mode. And there are various modes. For example, if you if you use I squared C communication, you would set it in a mode that say this is for I squared C. If you want to uh, toggle LED, for example, you would put it into push pull. If you want to read a value, you would want to put it in the reading value. And uh, the thing is, on an MCU, not all pins are created equal. And uh, if I would look at the data sheet, for example, for PA8, in here it, it will tell me that, hey, PA8 could be used for the following things. It can be used for IO and it, will, it can be used for uh, UART. And what do you know? It's timer one, channel one, which is exactly our PWM uh, signal that I'm looking for. And if I look uh, further along, let me, let me search if I have uh, separate modes, you can see it says, what, what are the alternate function? How, what mode do I need to set a pin in order to uh, perform a specific function? And for PA8, it tells me exactly what the Rust documentation told me. It told me alternate function two, you can use it if it's uh, timer one, channel one. Great. So I will need to set PA8 uh, in alternate function two, and then I can pass in all the arguments that I need. Uh, let me move this window uh, together with uh, code and uh, let's write some code. So uh, the first thing that I will need uh, to do is uh, include a PWM. So I will use create uh, PWM in here and let P equals, and I know I, I have to call this function uh, timer one. And uh, let's go back to the arguments. I need uh, Tim one, and I've uh, determined that this is from PAC peripherals. I hope this compiles and it's not the other one. It's, it shouldn't be Cortex. Uh, then for pins, uh, I need a PA8. Uh, I, I didn't set it yet, uh, but uh, it should be similar to how I got the LED. Uh, I'll figure it out later. Uh, then I need to a mutable RCC, which I have above. Mutable RCC. And it asks me, how about Hertz? And uh, if I click on to Hertz, uh, I will actually find that it's just a uh, U32. So uh, in theory, I, I could I could do this. Uh, let's say 50 hertz or something like that. Um, this does look as pretty. And uh, actually, if I if I'm looking for hertz, I, I can find other ways. And uh, I, I will show you here. Uh, so it says in return types. So what functions can can give me a hertz uh, type? And I, I find this HZ. Uh, function, uh, which is an extension. So what it says is that this is a U32 extension that if I if I call Hertz or uh, BPS or kilohertz and so on, it gives me various values. And uh, the implementation, uh, it tells me that for any U32 value, I can call these functions and get back a result. So this means that if I have this 50 uh, and I say this is a U32, I can I can say this is Hertz. And I, I think this looks, looks prettier. Um, so great, I'm done, I think, uh, more or less with documentation. Uh, let me move it out of the way. Uh, so I just uh, write code. Uh, now I have to uh, figure out how to do this PA8. Uh, I will copy and paste uh, this LED initialization, PA8. And uh, what do I need to do? I need to get a GPIO bank. For the LED, I had to use the GPIO bank uh, that uh, GPIO C, but this is PA, not C. Uh, so I will say GPIO A. And from GPIO A, I need a PA8, and uh, I will need to put it into some alternate function, I guess. Uh, let me delete the old value. And let's see if it auto completes. Into alternate AF2, great. So I expect this to actually more or less compile. Uh, I will remove all the unused imports uh, to clean up my code. So Steam one does not found in the scope. Well, this is great. Let me undo the R println. And I think this is PWM Tim one, right? Except that I have to use it. Trying again. Excellent. So at this point uh, the Linter actually tells me it knows the types, it knows that this is a PWM channels for timer one and it has exactly one pin. Uh, so what I will need to do is I will need to set uh, the frequency. I, well, actually the frequency I already have. Uh, I will uh, have to set uh, the duty. So P, uh, I'll read some documentation because it seems that autocomplete is not working for me. So um, 
let's see, timer one. I went a bit back and forth into here. So uh, when when I get one of these channels, uh, what uh, what can I do on them? So I I think it would be set duty. So I'll figure out where. Uh, what that is called. So in PWM channel, so I have set duty and I have enable. Uh, let, let's do that. Set duty of. Um, so what happens? The, the timers actually use counters. Uh, so uh, duty will not be a percentage like let's say 0 0.5 percent or uh, 100 percent or something like that. Instead, it tells me like what is the max duty. And I have to, uh, the range of the counters will go from zero, which means zero percent, to max duty, which would be 100 percent. So if I, if I want to put it, this at uh, 25 percent, I will say get max duty over four, and I will do enable. And uh, in the loop, I don't need to do anything right now. Let's see, cannot, uh, oh, because it's not mutable. And I don't need a pin to be mutable. Perfect. So my expectation right now is that this will compile and run. Uh, maybe I should put a log that's saying pwm initialize and be done with it. Uh, let's see if this, is compi this compiles and runs. While it's compiling, I will switch and I will turn on the camera to my little setup over here. Uh, I have my basic oscilloscope uh, connected to PA8 and ground, and uh, what I expect is that the signal should start showing up. So let me let me power it on and see if we get anything. Uh, hopefully we do. Oh great, uh, we do. I should actually auto set it. Hopefully it's it's a bit more visible. So you can see it's about one quarter uh, PWM signal. Um, if I stop it, I'm guessing the, the program will stop. Um, let's see. It froze, more or less. So at this point, uh, let's see that actually this really takes effect. Uh, so I will change it to 50% UT. And let's run it. And I expect the signal to show 50%. It looks kind of like 50%. Uh, my trigger is a bit off, I think. I don't know why. My oscilloscope is not the greatest either. OK. Uh, what we can do now, let, let's see if I can if I can change the duty at, at runtime. Uh, because if I control some sort of a server, what I would like is to, to go from different values. Uh, so what I will do is I will say let's uh, set duty 8. Let's say this to 50% and duty B to be 25% uh, again. And I'll set duty A here. So uh, now I'll set duty B. Wait one second. And then uh, duty A again. And I will delay one second. So I expect this to actually toggle between uh, A and B uh, over and over again. And hopefully every one second on the oscilloscope, I will see it moving around. Oh, this actually works. Great. Um, let's go to the next step and uh, figure out how to connect the servo to this thing. For uh, a servo, I have this. I'm not sure if it's how visible this is, but I have uh, this tiny servo that's labeled uh, SG90. Let's look a little bit of uh, at documentation uh, about it. So I will go SG90, and it will give me a data sheet. Uh, the interesting bits uh, are like this. Uh, like I, I know I have to provide it with power. There's a plus and there's a minus, and there is a PWM uh, signal uh, which is orange. If you look online the documentation, uh, it will tell you the same thing. Like these guys, they they give you a pulse, like how how big of a pulse you need to put it to position zero, uh, to position 90, and minus 90. So basically, it varies between one millisecond and two milliseconds, and I'm not sure what this is written here, but basically the pulses uh, should be, I believe, uh, 10 milliseconds uh, each, like the, the PW, PWM frequency. Uh, the other interesting bits, uh, which actually tripped me up a little bit, uh, was that uh, the, oh, I see here the 
20 milliseconds. So 20 milliseconds PWM period uh, and the duty cycle varies between one and two milliseconds. Uh, the other bit that tripped me up a bit was that this gets uh, about five volts. So if I just uh, put it to the microcontroller uh, power rails, uh, actually that one uh, is only 3.3 volts. Uh, it kind of seems to work, uh, but it won't be great. Uh, so uh, the first I will connect it and I will connect it wrongly to, to low power. Uh, it will move a bit, but it will be jittery just to, to make sure that my code works. But after that, I will connect it to actually 5 volts. So I am disconnecting. I know that the orange signal is PWM, so I'll connect that. Uh, I see that the brown is uh, ground, so I will connect that as well. And then I will figure out 3.3 volts, which is way too low. Um, so I'm, I'm repeating that. And I will connect the servo. So now I have a servo that is underpowered, but maybe kind of works. And uh, let's go back to code. Uh, reading documentation, I need a 50 hertz PWM period. Oh, I already set that, that's perfect. And then uh, let's figure out some duties. I, I would like to make it a uh, full cycle as much as possible. So if I look, uh, I have to multiply this by five to get a percentage. Uh, so let's see, I have to go between five and 10%. So 5% uh, is, uh, this is divided by 20 and 10% uh, is divided by 10. So I have uh, one millisecond, two milliseconds uh, duty cycles. And let's see what happens if I actually cargo run this. Oh, it moves. I'm not sure if you actually see it, but it's, it's extremely jittery. And this is because uh, the device doesn't really have enough power. Uh, I can also turn off my scope because uh, I'm not capturing the values. Uh, so let's figure out how I can actually uh, make it use uh, 5 volts uh, because this doesn't work well. So I'll stop my PWM and I have this uh, tiny device uh, I will provide the link, but it's basically an Adafruit device. Uh, the idea is that it will convert power. Uh, so uh, I will get a 5 volt rail and I will uh, convert the 3.3 volt signal into 5 volts. Uh, let me do that. So now you can see that uh, in this side of the board, on the left side, I will provide 5 volts in here, and my microcontroller will be at 3.3 volts. Uh, and I have this uh, tiny device that is able to convert uh, for various uses. It's, it's able to convert from lower voltage to higher voltage uh, back and forth. Uh, so let me uh, reconnect all the wires. I connected the low side, uh, so everything that the that the my controller has uh, goes to one side of the grid. I connected the power uh, to uh, my little converter. Then I connect uh, this time 5 volts. So I connect the ground. I connect power. And I know that my PWM signal will be now on 5 volts. And I connect that. So this jumble of a mess of cables, in theory, should allow me to convert from 3.3 volts into 5 volts. And uh, let's run the program and see if the P uh, if the servo will move a bit faster. So you can see that it's, it's a little bit more snappy. The one thing while, while I was playing around, I can see it doesn't do the entire 180 degree. Uh, and uh, what I have found is that if I go out of spec, and I know this is uh, 10 because this is supposed to be like, uh, I think uh, 10 milliseconds, but if I do something like eight, the servo will actually do the full run more or less. 
Uh, to be honest, I think I broke my server, so uh, that's the reason. Uh, but generally, this is how you control a servo, and this is how you do a PWM signal. So I uh, hope this helps.